Habana's Gulf of Tonkin Resolution Vertical Bracket Fox News. Fox News Digital Network. Fox News. Fox Business. You report. Fox News Radio. Fox News Latino. Fox Nation. Fox News Insider. Login. Account. You're logged in as. Profile. Log out. Search site. Listen to Fox News Radio Live. In air now. In air personalities. Home. Video. Politics. U.S. Opinion. Entertainment. Tech. Science. Health. Travel. Lifestyle. World. Sports. In air. Previous slide next slide. Opinion home. Michael Goodwin. Carl Rove. Sally Cohn. Juan Williams. Peter Morrissey. Andrew Napolitano. Liz Beek. Peter Johnson Jr. Obama's Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. By Frank J. Gaffney, Jr. Published September 6, 2013 FoxNews.com. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee, SFRC, Wednesday adopted, with bipartisan support, a resolution approving a strike on Syria that is being presented, as limited in scope and duration. In fact, it is likely to prove at least, as much a blank check, as the notorious Vietnam era Gulf of Tonkin resolution that was used to rationalize and authorize U.S. military involvement in Southeast Asia in a succession of hugely costly increases in what we now call our boots in the ground there. What we have here is a classic bait and switch. To be sure, there is language restricting the presence of ground forces, micromanaging the targeting of other elements and establishing a maximum 90-day deadline to bring U.S. military operations in Syria to a halt. But, thanks to Senator John McCain's determined efforts to embroil the United States in Syria's civil war, the SFRC approved resolution also establishes his American strategy the objective of changing the momentum in the battlefield. What we have here is a classic bait and switch. And it explicitly endorses the provision of all forms of assistance to the opposition's military and political elements. Not much imagination is required to see how such formulations, if ultimately approved by the Congress, would enable the Obama administration to engage to whatever extent it fancies in the overthrow of Bashar al-Assad's regime. Tactical strikes like those that helped Islamists stop a Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi can be called in. And any form weaponry and dash including man-portable surface-to-air missiles, night vision technology, rocket-propelled grenades, etc. And dash could be made available to an opposition that swears fealty to the Al-Mizrahi Front, a movement dominated by Islamists and designated a terrorist group by the U.S. State Department. That being the case, it is an open question against whom such weapons might ultimately be used. Proponents, of course, will seek to allay concerns in this score by pointing to language in the resolution requiring efforts to isolate extremist and terrorist groups in Syria to prevent their influence in the future transitional and permanent Syrian government. It also directs that assistance will only go to those opposition elements that have been properly and fully vetted and share common values and interests with the United States. Yet, the Obama administration and Senator McCain have been notoriously insistent that Islamists like the Muslim Brotherhood are moderates and people we can do business with. Indeed, with McCain's strong encouragement, the U.S. government under Mr. Obama has engaged, legitimated, empowered, funded, and in some cases even armed the Brotherhood. The rationale? They sufficiently share our values to be a bulwark against violent Islamists of the Al-Qaeda stripe. As we have seen in Egypt, that is simply not the case. Even if the Senate Foreign Relations Committee's resolution did not provide a basis for embroiling the United States in Syria's civil war in the side of the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda, it still would be deeply problematic. If approved by Congress in its present form, it would represent an implicit, if not explicit, endorsement of the UN doctrine known as the responsibility to protect, R2P. Again, there is a slight of at work 